Hello and welcome to chapter 20 of our Python 3 basics tutorial series. In this video what we're going to be talking about is modules in Python. So a lot of times modules are very confusing to newcomers, um, but they don't have to be. And actually usually a module is just a, another Python script and that's it. So that's what I'm just here to show you guys today is uh, how you could make your own module, where you would put it, and all of that. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we have a script and we're just going to call this, we're going to make this our module first. So I'm going to call this, uh, well first let's define a function. So I'll say define example func and then the parameter here will be data. And then this example function is just going to print data. So um, I'm going to go file, save as, and I'm going to go ahead and save this as um, example module.py. And let's go ahead and run this. So this function, example func, we'll say this is a test. When we run it, it just outputs this is a test. That is it. Now, what I want to do is let me open up uh, another script. Put it down here. And now we're going to um, import that module that we just created. So this is the directory that we're in. This is um, the file that I have open right now and then we also just created this example module so it's right here in the same directory as the script that we're writing. I'm gonna do import example module and if you recall um, the function was example func so bring this back up and then now that we've done that to call it, we would do example module dot example func, and then we would do test like that. We'll save that and let's run it. And sure enough, it prints out test for us. Now we've seen that it works here, but what if we go uh, to your start menu and you bring up idle that way? And what if we do import example module? Whoops, it says unexpected indent. Let's try this again. Import example module. There we go. It says there's no module named example module. Now, the reason for this is Python is going to look in a few places for the module. Mainly, it's going to look in local directory. So it's going to ask, is this module in the same directory as the script that we're writing? So in this case, it was because uh, this was the script that we're currently writing, and here was the module. Now in the second case, we opened up just the Python um, interpreter, and which is located in C colon slash slash you know, Python 34 uh, right there. Was the example module there? No. The next place it's going to look is in lib. Was it there? No. And then the final place it's going to look is site packages. And in fact, let's go ahead and bring that up. Let's go to computer, bring this over. We go into C, Python 34, and this is where we just were, right? So if the example module was here, it would have worked. Or in lib, and in lib is where all of the default packages are. So for example, we could search for statistics. We can bring up statistics. So this is the module that we have been using. And for example, if we scroll down here, uh, we get some, uh, I'm trying to find one of the ones that we just recently had used. Let's go down to the bottom. Okay, so here's variance. Um, so we had mentioned variants. This is just some comments. But then when you finally get down here, this is the code to the variance, um, the variance function. Uh, we can keep going. Here's standard deviation. This one provides the standard deviation um, of the data that you pass through it. That's that one, and so on. So anyway, this is the statistics module. So it's just another Python script. That's all there is to it. Um, and then we can come up here. And then we go into site packages, and this is where third-party modules will be. So you see I have matplotlib here um, and a couple of others, but this is where your third-party modules are. So lib is where all of your default packages are, and then in lib slash site packages, that's where um, your third-party modules will be. So what we can do is we can take example module, so here's my example module, and we can copy it into site packages. And there it is. So now it's been copied into site packages. Now if I do the same thing I did just a minute ago, 
and open up our interpreter, we should be able to say import example module like that, and we were able to do it. Then we can do example module dot example func, and then we can say yay it worked like that, and there we go it prints out yay it worked for us, and that's all there is to it. And again this function all or this uh, module all it is is just a simple Python script, and then we're treating it like a function or a, a module. So that's it, you know. So so modules are actually really really simple. Um, People get confused by them often, especially because you have to install them, when really uh, you could just download the source of most modules and click and drag them into your site packages and be done with it. Um, but instead people install them and some modules are going to require it, especially if they're written actually in C or it's a Python wrapper around a C application, stuff like that, then you will, it's a little bit more complex to install it. Something like matplotlib is slightly more complex. Um, but anyway, uh, that is how modules work in a very basic fashion. So hopefully that was helpful for some of you who are confused by modules. So again, for a module to work, it needs to be in the local directory of the same of the script that you're writing. It can be in the C colon slash you know Python version number and then slash lib. Or finally, it can be in C uh, colon slash you know, Python version number, so in our case, C colon slash Python 34 slash lib slash site dash packages, and that's where third party modules go. So, hopefully, that was helpful. As always, thanks for watching.